Y'all ignore my husband over there snoring, okay? I'm going to give y'all a reminder. Five months ago, when I put this video out, this little small clip and where we are today with the economy, with the fuel, with the inflation. Man, he's, he's cutting wood over there, honey. Enough. We going to need that wood this winter. So I've been asking a lot of the truckers that I run into what kind of pain they are feeling at the pump. So yesterday I talked to several of them that said they put $1,000 into their semi-truck to haul that freight that America needs to put food on the table. And there's just so many truckers that said that they're about to park their rig. They can't really afford to continue to stay in business as a small business, small, small owner operators. So yesterday, a few of them literally kicked the pump off when it hit a thousand dollars. They didn't want to go over. And, uh, this guy here, I talked to him and he, uh, he's, as you can see, he's got the long tank there. And I got one long tank like that. And I also got a uh, short tank on the other side. So he, he also told me that he put a thousand dollars in that Peterbilt. I got a 2019 Peterbilt is what I'm in. And I can put uh, about $800 in this thing. So anyway, I want to talk about the inflation. The inflation is only going to get worse because as I talk to more and more truckers out here, especially owner operators where they get their own loads through the brokers, some of the companies are already saying, and it's going to get much worse, obviously, but they're already saying we're going to hang on to some of our product because we can't afford to ship it because the trucking companies have to obviously um, ask for more, you know, 20% increase or whatever because of fuel prices. They can't make any money if they don't rise the, you know, up, up to four, four fifty, four dollars and four dollars and fifty cents per mile just to haul the freight. And sometimes closer to five dollars a mile to haul the freight. Uh, so they can't really afford that. So you can see how inflation works. If they're not going to ship products because of the fuel prices, now all at once it's affecting uh, many different products, you know, food, clothing, all of these different things, we're going to start seeing a rise. That's how the food, that's how inflation works. The food starts going up, the clothing starts going up, all your possessions, everything starts costing more. That's how I see another recession on the rise. Just like in 2008, when gas prices were, that's the last time they were this high. And fuel prices, diesel fuel, when it gets this high and it affects the truckers, now it's going to affect the whole nation. And everything starts rising. So remember, if you try to make sense of this whole thing, it, it, it affected the truckers' wallets first before it affected your wallet. Because we're the ones that have to haul this stuff across this nation. And if we can't afford to haul it, that's going to cause a humongous recession. And they better get a grip on this nation. Or, we're, or they're going to lose grip real quick, real fast. Good morning, fam. How are you guys doing today? So... We are going to jump right into it. I hope that you guys are having a blessed Sunday morning. It's going to be a busy day, a busy week. So much is expected to happen this week. And I want to get you up to date on some things in case you have not heard about some of them. So I want to make it aware to you that this clip that I'm about to show you at the beginning of it, She's saying gas prices are down across the country, but the one price that hasn't gone down is diesel. I don't know where she's living because gas prices are not down. If you're considering 334 um, being gas prices down, then you need to think about what it was um, in 2021. Where was, it? where was it then? Because gas prices are not down. Gas prices are down across the country, but the one price that hasn't dropped much is diesel. And when you're looking at equipment like this, it takes a lot to fill up, meaning it's impacting our farmers. That's all of what we're doing with farm. For Morris Glover, this land in rural Suffolk is all he has. We have peanuts, corn, wheat, soybeans, and cotton, five crops. 65 years of farming, and Glover says this is one of his most challenging years yet. He says due in large part to diesel prices. On average for the whole year, it's been about 20,000 per load more than last year. 
This is a 9,000 gallon tank for diesel fuel and according to AAA right now the average price in Hampton Roads is 477. Do the math that's over $42,000 just to fill this tank. Lover says that tank is filled up weekly during harvesting season, which is what we're in. It takes a lot of money to run it because you know we normally for make a good crop we get it all back plus a little bit to, for ourselves but uh we're not sure where we'll be this year until they until they, we get it all in and pick it and sell it and see where we're at. And he doesn't have the option of passing along those price hikes to consumers. So he is stuck between high fuel prices and dwindling profits. So in this article that I'm about to read to you, it says um, a major company that's tracked the availability of fuel issued on alert on Friday for a diesel fuel shortage in the southeastern United States, including North Carolina and South Carolina. Friday's alert from Mansfield Energy also included Virginia, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, and Maryland. The fuel supply and logistics company noted extremely high prices in the Northeast, along with the supply outages along the Southeast. So this is really starting to thicken just as winter is going to be hitting us. The company Mansfield also goes on to say that at times carriers are having to visit multiple terminals to find supplies, which delays the delivery and strains local trucking capacity. Also, the U.S. Energy Information Administration reported in an October winter fuels outlook that diesel fuel inventories on the East Coast at the end of last month were already 45% below the five-year average. The company Mansfield also stated that um, diesel prices are back up to $4.50 this week, the highest prices they have been since June. And I'm going to say it is way more than $4.50. Even if you're passing by, you can see yourself that it's over five dollars for diesel when my husband fuels up his truck he tends to try to drive to the south carolina border of north carolina and fill, fill up his truck and even that is over five dollars so he's really only saving a few pennies but he's going in that direction so that's why he does it but i mean everybody's going to be pinching pennies to the point where can you pinch any more pennies what will you do? Will they stop driving? What, how will they survive? So it also saying that that company is stating over the past two weeks, diesel supply has fallen to just 25 days of supply below the 35 to 40 days that are typically more comfortable for fuel markets. Um, and they said that on Friday in a week in a review newsletter. So when I did my we only have 25 days of fuel left. I'm thinking, well, I'm pretty sure we have a little more than that. And we probably do, but not enough to be comfortable with, okay? And most companies aren't sending out, you know, emails or memos because I'm having my husband check his every day so that I can try to stay up on what is exactly going on. So obviously these companies aren't being, in, aren't being informed of some of these things that's going on. So the U.S. Energy Information Administration reported that the retail diesel price for the third quarter average was 516 per gallon. And that's pretty much what my husband has been seeing, if not a little bit more. It's also saying in here, it estimates that diesel will be at 486 by the fourth quarter but that's keeping their fingers crossed that that will happen so i think this is the end of the article um it says mansfield energy issued the code red for southeast asking for a 72 hour notice for deliveries so that the fuel can be secured so they want to know do y'all have fuel here? Do you have fuel there? So all of this confusion of what's going on, is it 25 days left? Well, at this point, it's less than 25 days left of diesel, if it is to be said that it's true. But the push by the White House 
to release 15 million barrels from the U.S. Strategic Reserve and consider additional withdrawals this winter, Biden is telling frustrated voters ahead of the midterm elections that the White House hasn't given up. When elections is over, you're going to see who has given up, who didn't even try, who's done too much, and now we're in this predicament. Now, we didn't get there just by him. It started before him. But it's gotten worse since him. Those strategic reserves are just that, reserves for emergencies. And we keep tapping them. And I can't say that they're being tapped because you people care about uh, the pain at the pump that the average person is feeling. And I guess at this point it don't matter. People just want the fuel prices to go down, but it's going to come at a cost either way it goes. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I do have about two more videos coming out today so y'all have a blessed Sunday and I'll see you later.